too many. Not a lot. <laughs> Twelve people here. I think most of most of the classes. I I went to the class in hope that people's gonna be there sitting with me, but no one needs there, so I'm just like, okay. All right. It looks like it's recording now. Um, you see, you know now. You still see. We can see you. All right. Do you, you see keynote or do you see me? Yeah. Both. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Roth, unmute me, Austin. Mr. Roth, unmute me. Uh, our boss. Mm. All right. So I'm going to go over the. Oh, I figured it out. So everybody shut up. All right, so, uh, let's see. Write an array considered to be, oh, oh, here, this is the first question. Why are arrays considered to be fast and memory inefficient while linked are considered to be slow and memory efficient? The exam was not bad. I think I don't remember what the class was. Okay, there were there was uh, the high grade, the hundred, the low grade was I don't know, like forty something or something like that. I don't. Know. Um, okay, so why are arrays considered fast? They are fast because they are implemented using previous memory allows us to calculate. Absolutely. What? We should do this more often so I don't need to go to your class. Well, but then you wouldn't get to see me in person. It's okay. We're good. What do you mean that's okay? <laughs> We're only doing this today so I don't give you the plague. <laughs> Being nice to us, nice. I mean, I, I don't, I don't feel great, but I sound way worse. Than me. And I'm like coughing all over the place, so it's uh, figured I wouldn't contaminate the world. All right. So, so everybody can see what I'm typing here, right? We're, we're, I'm not just talking to myself. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So a razor, they're fast because they're implemented using contiguous memory, which allows us to calculate the position of an element and immediately jump to that bucket of memory. All right, so that's why they're fast. Then I asked the second part of the question, why are arrays considered fast and memory inefficient while well, linked lists are considered slow and memory efficient? So we can say arrays are fast and we can say, uh, Like list flow because they are implemented with each node only knowing about its neighbor. Therefore, to traverse the list. We need to start at the head and walk the list one node at a time, something like that. All right, then we can say arrays are memory inefficient because they require all of their memory to be in a row, that is, it's contiguous. And we need to know how many elements we will be storing at the beginning. <clears throat> so a chunk of memory must be allocated for 
all of that space. I'm going to say chunk of contiguous memory. And then we can say linked lists are memory efficient because they allow us to start with an empty list and grow the list as needed by creating a single place in memory for each node that does not have to be contiguous. <coughs> all right, so something along those lines, if you didn't use those exact words, I took off all the points. Understandable. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Uh, <laughs> all right. So um, that's number one. Most people got that right. I mean, I'm, I was mainly looking for the use of the word contiguous, making sure you understood that um, arrays are fast because they're implemented with contiguous memory. Um, that's also why they're memory inefficient, while linked lists are slow because they don't require contiguous memory, and that's why they are memory efficient. Hang on, are we gonna have our um, test back? You you have it online. Are you, do we? On Skype. Yeah, I, I graded them. Oh, okay. I know that I have the point. I don't know that I have the test online. Oh, hold on a second. Let me let me try something while everybody's here. Uh, here, I need. Oh, do you want to see Litman? Yeah, I was gonna say. Are you talking to Litman on Skype? Yeah, who's that? Kaylee, your favorite person. Oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm sick today, so I, I can't hear him, but I know him. Oh, oh, actually, actually, hold on. Yeah, I have. I I'm mad at Kaylee. Oh, he said he mad at you. Why? Because why? I'm sick because of your boyfriend. Because of your boyfriend. <clears throat> what about my boyfriend? I'm sick because of him. He got. He had the flu on the trip, and now I have the flu. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've been in that boat before. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. And now my wife's going to get the flu. It's just going to come round circle. I know. Um, okay, give me a second here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second, um, just in case I have some grades up on my screen. And I'm, uh, I'm going to hopefully be able to see <laughs> you guys. You cannot see my screen anymore, correct? Correct. We yes. just see beautiful Cookie Monster. Okay, good. Yep. Just Cookie Monster. Yeah, we were actually safe. I just want to, I'm going to go in and edit the exam real quick because I think this will release the, so what you can see on the exam is your points for each question, but you can't see your answer. Is that accurate? If you go and look at the exam on yeah. Blackboard, you can see what you got on each question and your total score, but you can't actually view your own answer. I'm yeah, checking. Something like that. Okay. I'm checking right now too. I'm going to okay. edit it. I think this will let me fix that. <laughs> okay, I just changed something, so go out of the test and back into it if you're just can you see all your answers now uh, where is the midterm at killing me it's under content under content i'm not seeing it under content me too same thing i don't get it you don't see the exam at all. You just see. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I yeah. don't see anything. Yeah. Are you lying? I mean, beside your Bible homework and program. Okay. Go into your grades. You can get to the test. Um, but I can't see my questions or my answers to questions. So. Okay. I don't even. I don't even see my test. Right. Yeah, I don't see mine either. Yeah. Hold on. They're not here. 
Oh, I see it. No, so, uh, yeah. no but it said begin. Answer 10 questions of your best ability. Uh, yeah, you, already, you already answered those, right? Yes. Right. The old attempts. Don't, don't, don't do anything else. Okay. <coughs> it doesn't let me see anything. Right. And it's, yeah, it links me back to the main pages. I don't click I, can, I can see questions, but not answers. I don't even see anything. Yeah, it's just like a blank page. Okay, let me try this. I can no longer see the questions. Does that made it worse? Yes. I mean, it's okay. We can fix it later, I guess. I don't know. Well, let me try one more thing. Oh, yeah. That did work. That did work? Well, I mean, it disappeared like you said it would. <clears throat> well, I, my goal is for you to see all the questions and my responses. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I, don't I would have that, but not the responses. I just thought I completed a test on March 5th, 14th, and that's it. Nothing else, Joe. Who keeps banging? If so, sh please stop. Yeah, if, if you uh, like, if you want, mute yourself until you need to talk, and then unmute yourself. All right. Did that make a difference? Yes, I can see it now. <clears throat> All right, so that's that's what we need. Well, what, what I just did. I don't see any response. It, it says response feedback and then none given for all the questions. Yeah, in some of the questions they may not have given a response to, especially the ones you got right. Gotcha. Yeah, so you should see your points. You might see some feedback if you lost points and it wasn't obvious why you lost points. Um, but you can see your answer right now. So you can follow along with what we're doing. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then let me switch back to this. And I'm going to share again. Oh man, you can create breakout rooms in this. This is pretty cool. Oh, now I need to figure out how to reshare my screen. Oh, there we go. All right, so you can see my screen again? Yep. <clears throat> okay, back in business. All right, so questions about number one. We understand the whole array thing. 
All right, so uh, number two, create a class for representing student objects. A student has a name, email, and GPA. Make sure to include all necessary constructors and getters and setters. All right, so I'm gonna actually just do this in Atom real quick, just so it's formatted a little bit better. Just do a file, refile. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to say public class, what I call it, student. Go ahead and save this as a. All right, so we are creating a class to represent a student. A student has a name, which is probably going to be a string, an email, a string and a GPA, which is probably going to be a float. Many of you used integers for GPA. Um, I didn't take off for that, but it's not necessarily all that reasonable of a GPA type. <coughs> all right, so name, email, and GPA. So we'll say private string name, private string email, private, you can say float or double GPA. Then we need a constructor for this guy. So public student takes in a string name, string email. Um, hold on, can I minimize this? There we go. Double GPA. This dot name is equal to name. This dot email is equal to email. This dot GPA is equal to GPA. <coughs> All right. So since these guys are private, we need setters and getters now. So we'll have a public ring get name. That return this dot name. Public string, get email, return this dot email, public string, get GPA, and it's not string, it's double, return this dot GPA, and then setters, public void set name. Now you probably wouldn't need to set the name. So if you didn't do any setters, that's okay. I'm just writing the setters just so you have everything. So set name would be this dot name is equal to whatever name was passed in. Public void set email. <clears throat> this dot email is equal to email. Void set GPA. Now, I'll just throw a little logic in here so you can kind of see the purpose of a setter so we can have a little instruction associated with this. Maybe we say we don't want to let them set the GPA to something less than zero. So if GPA is greater than or equal to zero, then we'll set this dot GPA equal to the GPA they passed in. So that gives you kind of a rationale for why you might want to have a field private, um, but have getters and setters, because this, in this case, we want to control how they can set the GPA based on that, not allowing them to set the GPA to something negative. <coughs> all right, so let me make sure I answered all of it. Student objects, with the name, email, GPA, make sure to include all necessary constructors and getters slash setters. Okay, so this would be kind of a full version of that. I'll go ahead and toss that onto
All right, so I threw that up on Slack, so you have it. Questions on that? <coughs> All right, next one. Convert one one zero one 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 zero zero from binary to hex. So that's uh what. One one zero one 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 zero zero. All right, so this is the binary version of that number. So it's the pattern where this is the ones place, the twos, the fours, the eights, the sixteens, the thirty twos, the sixty fours, the one twenty eights. So this is one twenty eight times one plus sixty four times one plus. 0 times 32 plus 1 or plus 16 times 1 plus 8 times 1 plus 4 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1 and that is you're missing a 32's place 128, 64, 30, oh, wait, hold on. Never mind, this is zero, brother. This is ones, twos, fours, eight, sixteens, thirty twos, fours, one twenty eights. So I'm missing the, so this is the one, two, four, six, oh. ones place, twos place, fours, eight, sixteens. Never mind, you're good. Yeah. So what was the answer there? 220? Twos, fours, eight, sixteens, 32, 64, 128. So 128 plus 64 plus 16 plus eight plus four. Yeah, that's the right number, right? 220? <clears throat> oh, wait, wait, wait. It was to hex, wasn't it? Binary to hex. I just converted to decimal. Actually, this, this question is way easier. So if you're going to convert this to hex, uh, you can use the trick. So here, I'll just keep doing it the long way since we're halfway there. So now I have it in decimal. If I want to convert 220 to hex, I divide it by 16 over and over again. So 220 divided by 16 gives me a 13. 13 times 16 is 208 with remainder of 12. <coughs> 13 divided by 16 gives me a zero. Remainder 13. Um, so a A is a 10, a B is an 11, a C is a 12, a D is a 13, so this is D. C? So D, C is the answer there? C is the only answer. Huh? Never mind. And then, so the shortcut way of doing this is you can divide this into nibbles. And this is the number 13. So this is the ones, twos, fours, eight. So eight plus four plus one is 13. So that's a 13. This is a 12 or a D. So this is the shortcut way of doing it. You can go directly from binary to hex by putting your binary number in four bit chunks, nibbles, and then converting them like that. Or you can do it the long way. 
questions on that one? <clears throat> All right, so that was three. Write an error-free Hello World program. We'll go through the motions. Public class hello. Public static void main. String array args. System.out.println. Hello world. <clears throat> like that. Okay, so a whole program requires you to have a class. And then we have our main method. Main must look like this, except you could have args named whatever you want. And then your system.out.println, blah, blah, blah. So this is proof that you know how to give yourself an opening skeleton for any Java program. All right, questions on that one? All right. Next, what is the this keyword and why do we need it? So this keyword is how an object refers to itself from within itself. We need it because we do not have access to the variable external to the class that points to this particular instance of the class from within the class. One object needs some way of referring to itself. This also gives us the power to use appropriately named fields and parameter names such that we can clarify which variable scope we are actually referring to. So that's like the this dot name equals name. This guy over here. I was able to say my field name is name. I was also say able to say my parameter coming into this constructor is name because that's what I'm taking in is the name. So then I can say this dot name is equal to name, where this dot name refers to this guy up here, and name refers to this guy right here because variables resolve to their most local definition. That makes sense. <clears throat> Anything else I was supposed to answer about that one? All right, so that's the this keyword. All right, next one, singleton and observer design patterns, and why do we need them? So two questions there. So this is more of a test-taking technique thing. When you take a test, make sure you reread every question and answer all parts that were asked. Some people only gave me one of these. So we have two things we're gonna talk about here, singleton and observer. <coughs> so singleton says it's a good idea to store information that needs to be shared by more than one class you could have said activity or something like that in a single place. You could argue that this is more than two. 
because maybe you say if it only needs to be shared between two, you might just pass it directly and not muddle up a singleton. But, you know, something along these lines is uh, uh, reasonable. We need it to conveniently share data between parts of our application. Observer design pattern is it's a good idea to be productive while we are waiting for some event to occur. I think I said give an example of each, didn't I? Nope, I didn't. Uh, for some event to occur. Um, so you might say something like, uh, why do we need it? Um, we need asynchronous we can say non-blocking abilities while we wait for some event to occur, like the database updating or a user entering some You spell entering five R's. Some search criteria. While we're waiting for something to happen, we want our program to continue on in a non blocking way and be productive. So the screens and our apps still work, things like that. All right, questions on that one. All right, <clears throat> seven. Uh, what's the purpose of our custom array adapter in our app? An array adapter allows us to connect a <clears throat> object type to a layout design for a row in our list view. It actually allows it to do it for other things other than just list views, but we've done it in terms of list views. We need a custom array adapter when we have custom objects we can say things other than strings where Java would not know how to work with our custom objects without our intervention. Custom adapter allows us to overwrite the get view function to specifically map fields in our objects, in our custom object, to views on our row layout. Something along those lines. Questions on that? <clears throat> All right, write a 
method that takes an array of ints as a parameter, reverses that array in place. All right, so this was a pass by value versus pass by address um, type thing. Um, some of you try to do the, you know, kind of a, a trick type thing where you only did it for half of it. That's fine. I'm going to kind of do a uh, pretty straightforward version of this. Here, I'll just write it inside of this. So we'll say uh, <clears throat> void reverse array. And this guy takes an int array AR as a parameter. All right, and we are going to, we want to reverse the elements in that are of that array in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new int array. Call this guy temp. And this will be a new int array of size AR dot length. And remember, the length of an array is not a method, it's a field. <clears throat> then we're going to go ahead and we're going to say for int i is equal to zero. i is less than, you can say ar.length or temp.length, since they are the same. And I'll go ahead and now. What we can do is we want to fill up temp backwards from filling up, uh, from reading through AR. So we can go two different directions here. On one hand, I'm gonna keep track of, so I'm gonna kind of show you maybe the, the cleanest way to write this. A for loop allows us to have multiple variables in here. So I can actually do this. I can say int i is equal to zero, j is equal to temp.length minus one and then I can say J minus minus <laughs> all right so what this lets me do is it lets me say I is my position in um, temp where J is my position in AR. So I'll say temp at bucket I gets AR at bucket J. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this guy up. So I'm walking AR, I'm walking AR in reverse. That's where the J comes in. So J starts off at the last legal bucket. I'll just go ahead and say AR there so it's clear. So J starts off at the last legal bucket in AR and walks towards the beginning of AR. I starts off at the first legal bucket of temp, walks to the last legal bucket of temp. Those guys have the same length. So saying AR and temp in here is, uh, they're synonyms to each other. So. I counts up, J counts down. So this is gonna set bucket zero of temp equal to bucket uh, AR dot length minus one of AR. All right, so this copies into temp AR in reverse. Then I can go back through <coughs> and fill up AR with the contents of temp. So for int I is equal to zero. I is less than temp.length, I plus plus. I can say AR at bucket I is equal to temp at bucket I. So I just copied the contents of temp back over AR. All right, so this is probably the most straightforward way of doing it, where I build a temporary array, I fill it up with my original array in reverse, then I go back through and I copy all the reverse version of that array into my original array. Would there be any issue with uh, just flipping the values in the array without making a secondary array? There's not an issue. You just have to play with the math, uh, uh, math more. So you want to do a swap thing. So what you can do here with um, 
so you have to kind of play the game of only going halfway through the array, right? So what you can do is you can, you can uh, walk through your array here um, and say, uh, AR at bucket I, well, you need, a sep you need a temporary variable and you're gonna just swap the two positions. And you're gonna do that until you hit the middle of the array. So there's not an issue doing that. It's just a little bit more mathy. You have to figure out where you stop <coughs> for, your, for your swap. Otherwise, if you go all the way to the end, you're gonna end up swapping the same place twice. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna swap bucket zero with bucket, bucket length minus one. Then you wanna swap bucket one with bucket length minus two. Then bucket two with the bucket length minus three. So on and so forth. But if you keep counting up, you're gonna end up re-swapping the values. Um, so you actually only wanna go halfway through the array uh, to do that. So not an issue, just maybe more error prone. So this is a pretty straightforward approach where I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create a new place, a new bucket. I'm gonna build that guy as the reverse version of my original. And then I'll overwrite the original with that reverse version. I have a question. Uh, the J, do you need it? Do you need to define it as an integer or you can just leave it like that? I think the syntax is just like this. But if you weren't, I mean, this is kind of a, something a lot of people don't necessarily do. The official syntax for a for loop allows you to have lots of things like this. If you weren't comfortable with that, you could do that. Int j is equal to ar dot length. This is one here. And then you could have dumped it from in here. And then minus one is done. You could have just stuck with a, a stock for loop and just had this external variable that. Oh my God. Can you talk faster? Does that make sense? So this is my first. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to switch back to this. Whoever's got their mic uh, unmuted, mute it. So. Perfect. All right, next one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Wait, I didn't kick her out, did I? No, I just muted her. <clears throat> well, it's actually kind of fun. I can do that. So I can like find out if Luke is playing video games. Oh, I, I can't unmute you? Oh, so I can mute somebody, but I can't unmute them. I want more power than that. I have to go to Russia for that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <coughs> okay. So plenty of ways you could have written this one. I just would write it in a fairly straightforward way like this to be less error prone. Many of you wrote the little kind of the mathy trick version where you just went halfway through and, and did the swaps. That's fine. Um, you know, you, you would just probably want to draw a picture to uh, come up with, uh, you know, with that, with that view. It's, this is less error prone. But the punch, let me show you one thing that <coughs> is actually the wrong way of doing this. Um, that a couple of people did just as a, um, a lesson type thing here. I'll just call this reverse array two. And this is a common mistake uh, that people will make. <clears throat> All right, so first part of this is the same. I just build in temp the reverse of AR, right? This is, the, this is effectively our reverse string function we're just doing it with, with arrays. We're building a brand new array that is the reverse of our other thing, okay? <coughs> but then what people wanna do is they wanna say AR is equal to temp. 
and just say they're done. All right, so now the idea is that you might say, well, as for pointers, this actually works because AR was passed by address, all right? Um, so I'm actually changing the value of AR to be this new address, which is temp. Let me show you why that does not work. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you in a picture here. This is a really common um, mistake that's frustrating when you're uh, um, trying to, I guess, learn something. All right, so we're gonna say we have this memory address 100 out here. Oh, 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 I don't wanna do that. And we're gonna say this guy is a, well, we'll call this my array out here, just to keep it uh, very specific since I'm not gonna be able to show you a full scope. So we're gonna say my array points to this guy. All right, then we have this function down here. We can't go up too high. All right, there we go. All right, so we might say uh, reverse array my array. So that's what we call here. So we're passing it uh, my array, and that comes in as AR. So AR points to the same place my array points to. Then we created this second array here. <coughs> All temp. And temp is some other place in memory. Okay, so now what happened <coughs> is we went through when we filled up temp, we filled up this place in memory right here. I'll make this guy red. So we created temp inside of our function. AR points to our original array, which my array also points to. This is an example of pass by reference. Where when we call reverse array passing at my array, we pass at the address of my array, and that came in as a variable called AR, because that's what I named my parameter here. All right, so because of that, AR and my array both point to the same place. Fine. So we built this brand new array called temp, which points to a whole new place in memory. Now remember, temp is a local variable to reverse array to. So that means it dies when this method is over. So I go ahead and I fill up temp <coughs> with the reverse of AR. All right? Then what do I do? Here at the end, I say AR is equal to temp, which does this. Then my method ends, my array has not actually changed. So it's easy when you're thinking about pointers to say, oh, okay, so I, I made my copy here. This is all fine and dandy. Now I'll just go ahead and update my AR value to be temp. AR holds a pointer. What we want to do is we want to update AR's original pointer. We want to update the stuff at that address. <coughs> We want to update the stuff at this address with the reverse of itself. We don't want to create a brand new address with the, with the reverse of itself and then tell AR that he actually lives in a new place. So the real life example of this would be if you have the address of my house and you're going to come and spray paint my garage and instead of spray painting my garage immediately, you go to my uh, neighbor's house and you spray paint his garage. And then you come back and tell me that my new house is actually my neighbor's house. So I go home and I find a spray painted garage at my neighbor's house, but that was not my original house. So you did not, you did not actually change my house. 
or in this case, you did not actually reverse the string in place. Does that make sense? <coughs> That's the difference between saying, in this case, AR holds a single value. The single value AR holds is the memory address 100, which happens to lead to this array that lives up here. Temp holds a single value, which in this case is memory address 500, which happens to lead to an actual array that lives in memory. I don't want to change the value of AR. I want to change the value of, of ARs where it points to in memory. I want to go to that actual house and spray paint that actual garage. I don't want to spray paint a different garage and then try to tell AR that, it's, that his home is a different place. <coughs> Does that make some sense? Common mistake when working with memory. That's why pictures can be helpful. Um, I don't actually recall. I don't think anybody did that on the exam. I just figured it is a common mistake, so I would uh, uh, throw it out there that you know this can look somewhat right from a pointer perspective but it actually is not so this is probably the more verbose way of doing it copy it reverse and overwrite the original in place i didn't change the value of ar I changed the value of AR, where, where AR's pointer pointed to. I went through and changed each of those actual buckets of memory. All right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, assuming you have access to a linked list of ints, <coughs> class similar to what we wrote in class, write a method that takes a linked list as a parameter. So you're just writing a method here, not a whole program, and removes all odd numbers from that list. You may assume that you have access to the following methods. Add front, add end, add end index, remove front, remove end, remove all, remove end index, get count, and get end index. Okay, so the thing this was testing, I'll just put a little comment in here. This is, was this nine or 10 or what number is this? Is this 10 for the exam? Yes, it is. Okay. Because I wrote a bunch of questions and then I decided what would fit into the hour and 20 minutes and would give you the most nightmares. I was surprised because you guys came to the uh, CS get together all depressed like the exam was super hard, but people did pretty well in general. It was just, it seems like it was just stressful. Something like that. But uh, that's good. That means you're getting better. In fact, I don't think there was one. I might not be remembering correctly, but I don't think there was one horrific grade. In most, uh, usually, you know, there's like that, somebody who just does not, this is just not their cup of tea. And they get like a seven on the exam or something like that. Um, I don't think there was any of that. Um, in fact, several of the grades that kind of dipped down maybe in the 50s or 60s, it was maybe because of running out of time. You know, the last two questions they left blank or something like that. Um, so, you know, that's just a efficiency thing, but <coughs> all right. So uh, what am I reading here? The link list code. Oh, I was going to give you a kind of a lesson here. Um, link list note, something like that. What's going on? All right, so when we remove something from a linked list, the size of that list has now changed. 
So when we actually remove something from bucket seven of a list, we've actually changed the structure of a list. So if a list used to have 20 things in it, now it has 19 things in it. So your loop that was operating off the count of that list is no longer accurate. You might walk off the end of the list and now you're pointing to the previous wrong bucket. All right, so <clears throat> that's where you need to be careful with linked data structures. If you have an array and you're going through and you're quote removing all of the odd numbers, you would, you would go through and maybe put some sort of placeholder in there and then build a new array that's the right size. We're gonna take a similar approach here with linked lists. Rather than me go through and removing the odds, I'm gonna create a new linked list and go through and keep the evens. And then I'll remove everything from my original list and copy it back over. I just wanna confirm I am removing odds, right? So linked list is a parameter and duplicates the elements, oh. Oh, no, 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 here's, here's my two linked lists. So this is, I'm, I'm currently writing number nine, then we have number 10. Both of them are dealing with linked lists, right? <coughs> all right, so this is remove all odd numbers from the list, good. All right, so we'll have a void, remove odds. This guy takes a linked list LL as a parameter, let's say. I'll bump that up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a linked list called temp. This guy's gonna be a new linked list. I'll give myself an empty linked list. Then I'm gonna go through all the elements in my original linked list. What did I call the function, like get count or something like that? Get count, okay. So I'm gonna say for int i is equal to zero. i is less than ll.get count i plus plus. Okay, so now each time through, I want to ask a question. I want to say, is the current value I'm looking at a odd number or an even number? I want to keep even numbers. I want to ignore odd numbers. So I'm going to say if ll dot, what I call it, get it index or something like that. <clears throat> get it index. If ll at get it index i mod two is equal to zero. If I am looking at a, <coughs> if I'm looking at an even number, I want to keep it. So I'll say temp dot add end ll dot get at index i dot get payload. So I'll get the number that lives in that node and I'll add it as a new node to the end of temp using temp's add end function. All right, so I'm gonna go through all the elements in LL. For each one I find that is even, I will go ahead and keep it. I'll add it to this new link list. So when all is said and done here, temp should hold all of the even numbers that were in LL. Then I'll say ll.remove all. So I empty out LL. Um, then I can go ahead <coughs> and say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than temp dot get count, i plus plus, ll dot add end, temp dot get at index i dot get payload. something along those lines. So create a new linked list, go through the old one and copy all even numbers from it into my new linked list, then empty the original list, then add all those even numbers over the uh, list that I preserved inside of temp. So something along these lines. If you if you took some liberties in here, like instead of add end get payload, you just left the get payload off. Assuming your add end works with a node, that's fine. I was looking for the overall logic. 
So some of you missed points, um, not tons, but you missed, uh, you might have thought you wrote it right, but you lost some points because of uh, you were actually changing the structure of your linked list. <coughs> so the common, let's say the common mistake way of writing this would have been, Call this remove odds two. If LL dot get it index I I get payload. I want to make sure I got the payload up here. This should be got get payload. So you actually have the number you're comparing. If that guy is odd, then ll dot remove at index i. <clears throat> Logically, that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go through every element of LL and any element that I bump into that has the um, uh, wrong thing in, that, that has an odd number, I'll go ahead and remove that element. Now, you, but by doing this, you actually just reduced count by one. Okay? <coughs> what you can do if you want to cheat it, um, does anybody know what I can do to this to make it work? Subtract one from I after remove the index. Yeah. So whenever I do modify the linked list, I'll artificially reduce I so that the next time around, since I'm incrementing it here, I'm decrementing it here, the next time around, if I just remove bucket two, I'll check bucket two again the next time through because now it's a new value at bucket two because I just removed the old bucket too. Does that make sense? So this will work as well, but this shows that you understood that your size of your list is changing. When you remove something, when you do this, you just physically change the size of your list, which means that get count is now a moving target. If it started off as 10, it just became nine. <clears throat> so you'll start skipping elements in your list. All right, questions on that one. So I call this a pretty decent, I, I call this a good solution, but I call this the safer solution. Um, and when you really think about it, it's uh, link lists are already slow, so who cares? Oh, hold on, is that a, a, a chat? Of course I won't post that to Slack. You gotta pay for something like that. I'll post everything in the Slack at the end. I know I already posted one thing, but at the very end, I'll just copy all this code. I'll just post it as one big post uh, to Slack. All right. <clears throat> Let's see, last one. Same functions, blah, blah, blah. Um, write a method that takes a linked list as a parameter and duplicates the elements in the list. Um, so for each element, you should have one more element in the list. So three, five, seven, if that's your original list, it should become three, three, five, five, seven, seven. <clears throat> All right, so again, okay, tool. oh, I'm off. Oh, you need to get payload because, uh, oh, did I like mute you permanently? Oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> I, was, I thought I was just muting you temporarily. Uh, you need to uh, uh, get the payload because that's the actual number 
that lives in it. Like if it was the number seven, you're trying to check to see if seven was odd. <coughs> you would get, assuming your get pay, assuming your get it index returned a node, you would need to extract the payload. If your get it index, if you assumed it actually returned an int, you would not need to. So I never, I didn't take off for any of that because I just gave you generic saying, you have a function called get it index. You can decide if get it index in your implementation returns a number, which I think that's what we did in our implementation. So if that was the case, you would not need um, uh, get payload. But if you assumed it did return a node, then you would have to extract the payload from it. So you knew you were dealing with the actual real number. So duplicate will take a linked list. I'll create an empty linked list. <coughs> Rent i is equal to zero. I is less than ll dot get count. I plus plus. I'll say temp dot add end ll dot get at index i and i'll just stay consistent with what i did up there so if you assumed your get at index gives you a number then that's all you need here i made the assumption above that it gives you a node so i'll say get payload <coughs> and then duplicate that so I'm adding to the end of temp the current number I'm looking at, and then I'll do it again. Then I'll remove everything from LL. I'll go through every element of temp. I'll sell ll.addend temp dot get at index i dot get payload. Again, assuming that get an index gives me a node, not a number. If you assumed it gave you a number, then you didn't need the dot get payload. And that should be it. So brand new list, go through original list, add to the new list, double, each element that you find, remove everything from the original list, go back through and add to the original list all the elements of the list you built. Yeah, so you're assuming your get at index is returning a uh, um, number, which is fine. So that means you have a value here. And then you're adding at index um, value plus one. That works because you jumped ahead an extra one. So you're, you're showing what, we, what I just showed on the last one, where if you're adding something to LL here in real time, which you are, and you're adding it one bucket forward from where you are right now, that's fine, but you just changed the count of LL. But you recognize that you changed the count and you incremented I. So by doing that, by incrementing I, you know you needed to jump ahead an extra, an extra dude. Otherwise, you're gonna end up duplicating the guy you just added. Yeah, so this, is, this looks good. If I took off points for that, I shouldn't have. So you can uh, message me. <clears throat> All right, so questions on this. <clears throat> okay, just send me a private message. I'll uh, I'll fix it. So I don't forget, send it to me on Slack. So when you make a new method that changes a linked list, it's proper to build up a new linked list. Proper is probably the wrong term. It's probably um, 
easiest to do that. Otherwise, you have to play the game of kind of keeping track of what you just did to that linked list to make it different. Okay? Um, so with that in mind, uh, um, I would say it's a good first start to always build a new list and then make your changes, then copy everything over because linked lists are slow to begin with. Okay? Um, but... You know, if you understand that you're modifying the list and the numbers are reasonable uh, to, to, you know, fudge the math, then go ahead, do it. Your solutions show that you knew what you knew how that worked. All right. So any uh, last questions about this? I'll go ahead and post all this code <coughs> to Slack and I'll put up this video. Um, we are going to start looking at stacks on, um, Thursday, which are an individual implementation of, um, as a simpler implementation of, uh, link lists. So, um, I'll put up Bible homework today. Uh, I won't give you any homework for Thursday because I'm not thinking as clearly as I should be right now anyways. And, uh, but everybody should have the results from their exam. So check your exam, make sure I graded it right and uh, private message me on Slack if I didn't. Otherwise I will see everybody on Thursday and hopefully I will be on campus on Thursday. Well soon. I hope so. I don't feel that bad. It's just, I sound bad and we'll see, we'll see what, we'll see what ends up happening. <clears throat> Say hello to Mr. Gonzalez for me. Say hello yourself. He's right here. Hello. <laughs> Who do you think was typing? There. <laughs> Honestly, there. <laughs> All right. How do I stop this? Oh, let me look at this chat stuff real quick. You don't think I should sing karaoke? My, I sing Backstreet Boys karaoke. It's awesome. Let's hear it. Well, right now it's going to be terrible. <laughs> but it is funny. Whenever I'm at a place that has karaoke, I, it's like the only songs that I actually don't mind. You know, it's like, uh, uh, but I get up, I get like really into it. You know, like I'll, I'll like walk up to complete strangers and like, you know, you know get, it, get into their personal space. So it's, it's pretty funny. We were at um, we were at a place a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, several students were there, and and it, it, it actually wasn't even karaoke. We were playing Backstreet Boys on my phone and just singing in the restaurant. So yeah, it's, it gets gets funny <laughs> for ear cancer. Is, now, is that the Backstreet Boys or the Backstreet Babes? Boys. Okay. Is there a Backstreet Babes? I didn't know that was a thing. No, I, I was saying, was that you and your friends? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> no, all, all the rest of the people, they just get embarrassed that I'm sitting there doing that. All right, stop recording. <laughs>